Well, welcome everybody to this new part of the course. Here I'll start explaining to you the gigantic potential of this program, which is really a true wonder. I think just like ZBrush meant a revolution in 3D, with Substance Painter is going to be the same, but in this case in applying color and textures to 3D objects. So it's very important to understand this program. Here we'll make an introduction, but you'll realize that with just the introduction you'll be able to create a very, very powerful final piece. So imagine the loads of things this program has for you to do. So I'm saying it's just an introduction. We're going to do an introduction to the interface without specifying everything because there are a lot of things, but so you can get an idea, okay? First of all, we'll open the model we have. We'll hit File, New. And clicking Select will navigate to the file we want to open. In this case, our low poly bill. Click Open and then OK. Here we have the object. It's worth mentioning that every time we want to open an object in this program, it's necessary that we first have the UV maps from it. If that's not the case, you won't be able to open it. As you see now, we have this model in low poly. But what we want now is to compress now and join the high poly and low poly versions so we make an only object with a lot of detail. I mean, we need to achieve, thanks to the maps that we've extracted, that the model stays low poly but keeps the detail of the high poly. For these, we'll go now to Bake Texture. And here in this panel, we'll do the following. We'll set the output size to 2048, though if you have a PC that could slow down because of this, you can select 1024, don't worry about that. And here in high poly parameters, we'll open the high poly model. We won't change any more options in this tab, so we'll switch to the ID tab and we'll set color source to mesh ID or polygroup sub mesh ID. In this case, we'll select the latter. This will be enough, so we'll click Bake Texture and we'll have to wait a bit while the model loads. Good, the model is loaded now, as you see, and we have the maps we exported already imported here. The ID map wasn't imported, so we'll have to do it manually. Simply click on this button here and we'll see that we have these maps here to export them. In order to import the missing map, we just go to the Texture tab, use the File Explorer to navigate to the folder in which we saved the ID map, this one here, and we drag it into the Textures map. Now from here we just set it all right, this program's interface works as follows. Using Alt, we move the camera. With the central wheel of the mouse, we dolly in and out. We can also do this with Alt plus right click, dolly in and dolly out. Using Shift plus the left click, we rotate the environment, so the light and shadows also change. And using Control alt plus click we can move the object around, all right? It's really easy to understand Substance Painter's interface because it's not very crowded and it's very well organized. Here we have, as we said, the maps here are the objects that compose the scene. In this case, we only have one, so we only have this material. Here we have options for the environment. We can set another kind of background, for example, this background. You see when changing the background of the environment, it changes the light, the color and the shadows. Here we have the opacity of the environment and different options. 
We can activate the shadows here and tweak its quality here. And it's the same we talked about before. If your computer is not too powerful, you can work with the shadows disabled now. It's not a problem. This is the intensity of ambient occlusion. We'll leave it as is. This is the quality, which we can also raise it or lower it, depending on our interest. Here is the post effects tab. Very important that we can enable it. And basically what I'll activate is anti-aliasing, which as you know, makes the borders more defined. And then we have several filters which can be used when we set this model in a 3D environment using an engine will be able to use these options. But well, it's important to know it too. There's a depth of field effect, for example, see? We'll leave everything disabled and we'll only activate anti-aliasing, okay? Here we have the log box, which logs everything you do. In this panel, we have a gallery or library with different alphas. Procedurals, generators, textures, materials, etc. In this other panel, we have the brushes, the alpha type of the brushes, a particles panel, which we'll see how it works. It's kind of a special brush. And here are some tools, which we won't be using much of them, but it's also good to know they're here. Here we have the materials. I would classify them as materials to start out. You know, most of them, as you can see, have some effects on them already, obviously. And here we have the smart materials, which are very useful in order to know how the program works. We can use them to set a base color and to understand how it all works, because this is actually very similar to Photoshop after all. I mean, here we have the layers panel, and when we add a texture, we'll see that texture or material is composed of different layers. Besides, each layer has different effects. As I say, this part is here, the layers. This is quite similar to Photoshop, because in each layer, we can choose its blending mode and the intensity of the layer, which we can set a different value for each blending mode. We have the effect button here, the mask, edit layer, add layer, paint layer with only one color, different options. Finally here, we have the brush and material viewers. We can set the brush size bigger, smaller, more spaced, and tweak the properties of each element we're placing. So let's start with this. I don't remember if we saved the document already. We haven't, let's save it. And we'll start working on this. Well, let's start, first of all, seeing how the layers work. And for this, the easiest is to set a smart material. In this case, we'll use this gold material to set it. So we'll grab it and we'll place it in here, okay? As you see, our object get, gets colored with this gold color. And as you see inside the gold layer, we can see different several layers. Here, what I advise you is using these dots here, you keep seeing what each layer does, you know? So we get a bit closer to the object and we can see the base color, which is beneath all layers. And if we remove it, we see the base color disappears. Also, obviously, when we click on a layer, we can see the properties panel with the properties of the layer. In this case, the materials base color. Obviously, if we click on the base color and we set it to another kind of color, the color changes. We can set a darker color, for example. All right. Here, if we tweak the roughness parameter, we go from a very bright gold material here in black to a more matte look 
it will set it to white. You know, the same applies to the metallic option. Take a look and see how it changes. In this case, what we want is the roughness being around here and the metallic towards the white zone. Each layer has some options, on or off. In this case, for example, in the base color layer, we see height doesn't have any option on. See, I move this slider and nothing happens. On the other hand, if I select the surface details layer and move the height slider, we can see how the roughness changes in the surface. Either on the negative side or the positive side, so it doesn't matter which side we set it, but it should be a bit visible. There's another option for this to be seen even better, which is raising the size of the texture. If you have a not very powerful PC, I advise you to leave it like this, like in 1024, but, it, but if on the other hand you have a good PC, why not try 4096? You'll see, you know, you will notice the difference. Check out the detail we have now on the texture. There's so many detail that now we have to lower these parameters so it's not too much. In this case, I'll set it to negative numbers and more or less around here. Very little, because if we put too much, notice that the effect is exaggerated. Check out this other layer, for example, the ambient occlusion layer. What is ambient occlusion? It's that shadow generated when two objects or surfaces are close to each other, and it, in this case it works as follows. Ambient occlusion paints the parts that are carved in. You see? I can change this color to black, for example, and check out how the shadow goes black. This is very easy to understand, as you add materials and you'll see their composition. As I say, it's just an introduction to the program. We won't see everything, but well, seeing these, you'll understand many things, all right? Good, now let's imagine that what we want is to use the ID maps in order to paint the wings with one color. The eye or this part with the pyramid that we did. Here's the ID map which as I told you, in UV maps, when you place it, it can happen that it's upside down. We'll see these in a moment. Just Let's just quickly save the document. We're going to paint this layer here, so we'll change its color to this one, for example, okay? Good, now we right click and we add a white mask. And now we right click the mask and choose add mask with color selection. So once we've done this, this panel opens here. We have set the ID map, which for now it's okay, but we'll see if it's actually properly oriented or upside down. If that's the case, we'll rotate it in Photoshop or maybe even using ZBrush itself. So let's click on pick color and as you see, it's actually in the wrong orientation, but it's okay. So I first saw this possibility, so I prepared two alternatives in which one is rotated 180 degrees and the other one is flipped. I would say the problem is that it's flipped vertically. So we'll take this one and we'll place it here. Then we click here and change it to. And now we'll do as follows. Here we have the ID map 3 already on. So we click on pick color and notice how it looks properly now. So what do we want to paint with this color? the wings. So we click here and we get the wings instantly painted with this color. As you can imagine, the possibilities are endless because we can do this in any kind of material. For example, we can add a new field layer
we set the color to some shade of green. And we will do the same. Right click, add white mask, and right click on the mask. And I mask with color selection. And from here, using pick color, we select what we want to paint. It instantly paints on the pyramid. Now we can add more effects from here. For example, we can right click here and select Add Filter. We've added a filter now, which as you see appears here, and here we have more filters. I won't explain all of them, but for example, we can add Blur, so borders are much more blurred. We raise the blur intensity and notice the difference between with and without. Besides, as you know, we can switch the blending mode and, for example, set it to a different one. Also lower the intensity of the blending mode, so... Check the different blending modes, try them out, and keep working on it. You can also try this in the eye and set a different material. We can also go to the wings we did before, and from here, add filter, and set it to blur, so we can paint these borders properly. Now, for example, we can add this material, which is some kind of worn copper, on top of this. Notice how everything gets painted and, well, if you want to see the composition of this material in order to learn how to create materials, you know that if we expand the menu, we can see the layers and their composition. You can look into these and select some of the layers in order to see how the effect to the material itself. Here we can right click, add white mask and do as we previously did. You know, pick a color and we click on the color. Notice that now we only painted the eye using the copper material. What else do we have here? For example, we're going to add a new fill layer. with a color, for example, this one. Add a black mask in this case. And from here, we'll use this option to apply a generator. This panel will open afterwards. There's much more things to do in this panel. If we click this tab here, we can see the generators. These are some kind of layers. Each of these spheres indicates a shape. In this case, for example, let's choose the first one. And notice we get some kind of mask which paints with this color all the carved parts. Check out the difference. Now we can select these and lower the intensity a bit or change the blending mode. We can now add a new layer, paint it with another color, the one you want, doesn't matter. This one, for example. Remember, right click and add black mask. And from here, click Add Generator. And I suggest you to practice and check out what each generator does.
okay, nothing was happening because I was working on a normal layer instead of a fill layer. So be careful with that. Now we create the proper layer that we need, a fill layer with color. It's very important that it has color. So now we can set the color with this. Let's pick up a different one. Right click, add black mask and add generator. And now we can try what other kinds of generators do. Check out this one, for example. And from the parameters, we can change the seed, which is the randomness of the variation. You know, check out that this configuration creates this fabric effect. Though we would be interested in another one in this case. But well, it's a matter of trying out settings. This one, for example, does a bit the same. It colors carvings with this color. We can select this one, for example. And here, managing these controls. Check it out. Keep modifying everything. And now from here, as you know, we can modify the blending mode too. All right. Not much more about this program. There are other options that I told you about, like obviously choosing a brush and using a material paint on the model itself, as you see. From here, we can change the parameters and the material. And we can also use the particles brush, which as you'll see, it creates quite interesting effects. You know, like for example, let's choose another color. And we'll also change the material because that one was very bright. Okay, I think this looks good. As I was saying, from here we can choose different effects. For example, this one here, broken glass. Check it out. You see what effects it does. Burn, which is some kind of fire effect. Check it out. It's a bit laggy because we're working with a very detailed texture. We could lower the texture's resolution so it's faster. Truth is, there are very interesting effects. This one here, heavy leaking. It is quite interesting because, as you can see, creates this worn out effect, which besides painting, as you see, it also adds geometry. As you know, you can modify all these, you know. From this layer, you can lower the color value or for example, from here, the height. You know, from here, we can lower some things and from these parameters, we can lower others. If on this layer, this brush we've used besides adding color, it adds geometry, as you see, we can click here Select height and we can lower this parameter. So it's less exaggerated. And if we're back to the color, we just lower the color. Okay. Good. There are a lot of very interesting effects that you can try. This one, for example, is very nice too. And finally, we're going to change the background because as you know, setting one background or another makes a big difference in the lighting. Notice how it changes. We set this background. And now in order to export all these without a hassle, we'll save the document before. Now we go to File,
and export all channels. But before we do so, it's important to bake the textures again from here. We don't need to tweak any option and hit bake texture. All these but before exporting all channels. Good, now we baked all of these. Now simply select the ID map we had and now we can export these using export all channels. Here we'll save the document where we want, in this case in the correct folder. And here in configuration, we can select how to export these channels. Depending on the engine we're going to use it with, if it's for video games, Unity, Unreal Engine, or if it's like in our case for uploading to Sketchfab, or we can also open it with Marmoset, which is also a viewer. In this case, we'll upload it to the internet, so we'll select this option here. And here we'll see that we'll export color, roughness, metallic, normal, height, and emissive maps along with it. Though we won't need this last one. And we'll set a resolution of 4096. As you know, you can lower this parameter if you want. So that's pretty much it. There's no need to change anything else. Hit export and wait for the maps to be exported. We'll leave this part here and on the last lesson we'll learn to upload the model to Sketchfab. So see you in a bit.